Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Grace Community Church. Hope everyone's had a great Thanksgiving weekend. This morning will be uh, very Thanksgiving-centered. So I just ask you guys to walk in the doors with a heart of Thanksgiving and gratitude and be thinking about what it is you are thankful for. Let's praise Him this morning. Enter His gates with thankful hearts. Step into His courts with songs of praise. Give thanks to Him. Praise His name. He is good and His love knows no end. Oh, 
about giving thanks to the Lord for all he's done. We're going to begin this morning by watching a video of our, our amazing gym students and leaders. This year I'm most thankful for naturally God, but also the church family, especially Jim, the youth group here. And it just gives me a place to be where I can come with all my troubles, my stresses, and it's just so fantastic what they have here. I'm most thankful for the gift of the Holy Spirit because um, it's like God coming to earth. He's giving a form of himself to us on earth and it gives us a sense of conviction and it just allows us to really get enveloped in his presence and to feel him and it just makes it so much easier to experience his love because it's kind of hard to believe in something when you can't see it or feel it but with the gift of the Holy Spirit um, we're able to feel that love that God gives to us. So that's what I'm most thankful for. 
I'd say I'm really thankful for is, of course, uh, my family. Uh, I have a great dad that I grew up with and uh, a great mom who's raised me as well. And I have uh, a lot of siblings in my life that have definitely impacted me. I'm thankful for my parents because they've helped me a lot during this time and I'm getting my license next month. But then I'm also thankful for God's protection over me because my anxiety and my overthinking has been getting to me a lot lately, lately so I'm I'm happy that he's been there for me as well and thankful for my leaders, that's all. I'm really happy for, uh, for uh, my mom and my dad. I'm thankful for my parents for letting me come to Focus. It was an amazing experience, thank you. I'm really thankful for the relationships that God has blessed me with, whether it be family, friends, just all of that I'm really thankful for. I just wanted to say that I'm really thankful for my leaders and how they cared about us and were really nice to us this year. One of the things that I'm most thankful for is uh, this youth group in general, but specifically the junior guys and how much they've blessed and strengthened my life. I'm thankful for this opportunity to be here. I'm thankful for my mom and my family and all the great people at church. I'm thankful for God. You know, I wouldn't be here without him. I'm thankful for this chance I got for uh, to get to come here for at Focus. It was a great opportunity. It was really fun. I got to meet new people. I'm thankful for all the people that helped me get closer to God. It was a great time. I'm thankful that my parents have uh, money that they can pay to go for me to go places such as at camping and Focus and stuff like that. I'm thankful for my, uh, my mom and just like my phone and stuff like that. And just I'm thankful for um, just like being here. I'm really thankful for time um, that the Lord gives us so that we can spend with family and friends and the time that he allows us to do ministry and um, just enjoy life. So, yeah. <laughs>
You may be seated. I would like to take this time to share a little bit about uh, what I've learned. Okay, now, as Christian, I'm pretty sure, and uh, we all understand that we have a mission. We need to share the love of Christ to the world. Now, obviously, you know, it is not something that easily, it is not uh, that uh, easily done in a, or, nat- or in a natural way we, we do it, okay? Normally, we live in a world and uh, so many things going on, a lot of uh, noises and uh, from all over. We don't know who to listen and how to listen. And they are so, we are in a habit of rush into things. We want to do things quickly, get it over with. Or uh, we are like a, a, in a easily and like a loss, we lost in a crowd and there's so many things going on. So the, these are the things distract us from like uh, sharing the gospel in the right way, okay? Now, uh, what, but what I found out from John the Baptist is, is uh, he is very focused on his, what he need to do. He knows, he knows that he is only an instrument. Now, according to the Bible, it says and, uh, he is not the light, but he is the one who points other people to the light, that is Jesus. Now, so he is very cautiously understand what he needs to do, okay? He does not focus on himself. Rather, he focus on uh, his, like a, as an instrument, he needs to point people to Christ. Now, more than that, okay, uh, easily, and uh, we would be focused on uh, our ministry, like uh, for myself, uh, I would, you know, it is not a bad thing, okay? Now, we want to look for results. We go after different ways how we can do ministry, share the gospel effectively. So sooner or later, we look at the result. We want to see the result. But rather, we need to focus on the messenger, Jesus, and his message. Because he died on the cross for us. That is a message. Now, that's the way John uh, uh, shared his uh, message. Now, he went out to the wilderness, and instead of... uh, Normally, simply, and uh, lo- we look at logics, okay? We think, well, there's a big crowd. We, we need to go out there, and uh, we need to attract more people. But he led by the Holy Spirit. He went out to the wilderness because he has a message. That is Jesus. So that's why he doesn't look for the crowds. The crowds look for him because he has a message. Now, so he knows what he needs to do. He knows how to do it in the right way. Finally, I know that you know, John uh, looked very carefully into like, uh, the way he walked with God. Now, according to the Bible, he said, it says in, uh, he draws his power from the blood of Jesus. Okay, and uh, and uh, as the Bible described, if we walk in the light, we have fellowship with each other. And uh, uh, as he himself is walking in the light, and then his blood can cleanse us from all sins. That's where he draws his power from to, share, to finish his mission. I hope that it is our, uh, reflect, how we reflect on our ministry to the way we share the gospel with other people. Amen. Amen. I just invite you guys, if you have your, your bread and your cup, if you're watching at home, have your bread and your cup, and you may eat and drink together. Lord, just thank you, uh, Lord, that, that John the Baptist said, I, I'm, I'm not the one you're looking for. I'm just the one pointing the way. And, Lord, we want to be a people that point the way to you. Point the way in all that we do. And point the way in our, in, our, in our families, Lord, in our workplaces, in our classrooms, in our neighborhoods, Lord. We... You are the light of the world, but you turned to your disciples and said, no, you are the light of the world. Praise you. Amen.
praise, glory, honor, thanksgiving be to you today. Thank you for all that you've done. You are the light of the world. And we pray, Lord, you would shine in all the dark places of this world. And not only that, Lord, shine in every dark place in our life. There would be no unlit corner that your light does not shine in in our lives. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. Hello. Thank you. At this time, we want to dismiss those that are serving in Adventureland during the second part of our second service. So you can, uh, teachers and leaders, you can be dismissed. We want to announce that our junior high students will remain in the service today. We'll give you an opportunity to miss, give thanks. Uh, so junior high students, you stay here. Uh, kindergarten through sixth grade, you can stand up and be dismissed. You will follow the signs to my right or your left to Adventureland. Lord, we just, we speak blessing over our children and over those who lead and teach them. And we ask, Lord, that your anointing would be on our teachers and that the students would have ears to hear today now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Did you guys have a good one? So I welcome you to Grace Community Church, those of you online, those of you here in this room. I did read that the average person in America this week gained eight pounds. How many of you are above average in our congregation? So we really are grateful that we all had a chance to give thanks to the Lord. This service is going to be a lot of time, to, opportunity to do that in singing and in praying and also in testifying. So we're going to go ahead and do that in prayer right now. So let's all stand together and we're just going to have a time of giving thanks to the Lord. So just close your eyes if you would and just think for a moment of all the ways that God has blessed you and give him thanks. There, there never needed to even be a you or a me, but there is. Thank him for life. And even in our sin, he saves us. Thank you for everlasting life. Thank you for a glorious future, Lord, that we're going to be with you forever. Thank you, Lord, for all the ways that you have forgiven us, all the ways you have strengthened us, protected us, healed us, and all the ways you have satisfied us. We thank you, Lord. We give you thanks with full hearts today. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now look around and make a new friend and just go ahead and tell them how much weight you gained over Thanksgiving. Go ahead. Welcome to Grace. If you're new here, we have a link on our website and in the comment section of our Facebook feed called gracearlington.com slash new. If this is your first time joining us, we'd love to get to know you better. If you could fill out the card in the seat back in front of you and take it to the welcome area after the service, you can meet Pastor Gary and get a free gift. As followers of Jesus, we want to be faithful in all that he's given us, and that includes our tithes and offerings. You can give in the boxes around the room or online at gracearlington.com slash give. If you have any prayer requests or want to share your testimony, go to graceellington.com slash prayer requests. And now, here are a few more announcements.
Well, my first announcement for you this morning is a great way to add some hope to your Christmas season. And that is with our Advent booklets that we have. I hope you got one on your way in. If you didn't, you can grab one on your way out. And this is a labor of love that we have titled Waiting with Hope. It is a reading that's been written by so many of you at Grace Community Church and edited by Maureen Gonzalez and James Williams and Josie Bushett put it all together. And I hope that you take advantage every day during the Christmas season and remember the hope that Christ has given given us as believers as we navigate all the way between now and Christmas Day. So the second announcement I want to highlight this morning is our season of giving and especially our Toys for Mexico project. In just a few weeks, Pastor Jose and Pastor Will are going to be getting in a van and taking thousands of toys to Mexico, partnering with some churches that we've been connecting with over the last few months and helping bring Christmas to the children of these churches and surrounding areas in Mexico. And you bring them up to the church. We're looking for toys, especially that do not have batteries, so things that young children would enjoy joy and in their shoes as well so if you find some children's shoes that are on sale we would love some new children's shoes as well bring them all to either the church office or the foyer over the next couple Sundays we're going to all put them in the trailer and take them down to Mexico and bring the spirit of Christmas to Mexico this year to find out more you can look at your bulletin this morning or go to gracearlington.com slash season of giving for the final announcement this morning, coming up on December 11th at 5 p.m., that's a Saturday, is the annual Men of Grace Cookout. This is going to be a time you're going to be there because we have special guest speaker Joel Richardson. He is an expert on all the things happening, especially in the Middle East, how it ties into Bible prophecy and God's plan, what he's doing around the world today. It's going to be a powerful message. And along with that, we're going to have great raffle prizes. We're going to have great barbecue. It's going to be a wonderful time. So if you decide to come last minute we will take you at the door it's gonna be ten dollars at the door but if you register early we've got a special offer for you if you register early today or online or in the foyer for that same ten dollars you're gonna get a your ticket you're gonna get a ticket to bring a friend who does not attend grace for free and you're also gonna get a free raffle ticket so you can maybe win one of those great prizes Gary's doing without spending any extra money. So this is a great package for you. I wanna make sure you take advantage of it. So you can register today on Realm or in the foyer. And for more details, go to gracearlington.com slash men. And that's all the announcements I have today. Welcome to Grace. Well, welcome to Grace. And I wanna jump on that last announcement and just say that in two weeks from today, Joel Richardson will be speaking Sunday morning in both services, but he only has like 35 minutes of time to speak. And of course, it'll be streamed. And uh, he really does an excellent job. Uh, I think he's one of the foremost scholars in understanding end time prophecy. And he has a special gift in really what relating to what's going on today. Now, so we'll hear him Sunday morning, but Saturday, so the, the 11th of December, he's going to be able to speak for an hour for, to the men. That will not be taped. And so, guys, you, you don't want to miss this, and plus all the fun and the food. So we want every man of Grace Community Church to be at our cookout December 11th. So, guys, go ahead and get your tickets today. It's, it's, a, it's a heck of a deal, and uh, you really enjoy it, and you all get so much out of it. And I'm looking forward to hearing from myself because uh, as things change, you know, in in Middle East, he keeps up with what how that fits with Bible prophecy. So it'll be very insightful. You don't want to miss it. Plus, I said, send some of your books, because I've read, I've read uh, most of his books, and they are excellent. And I said, why don't you send some, because I want people to buy them and read them. He says, I'll send some, but they don't have to pay for them. They can just, if they want to give a donation, fine, but I just want them to have them. So guys, you take advantage of that as well. When those books come, snatch them up and read them, and then share them. Let's all pray one more time before we look at the Word together. Let's pray. Father, we, we understand some of what it means to be blessed by you. But today we want to ask for your help and what it means to bless you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I actually started to bring a live turkey with me this morning. But then I decided against bringing a live turkey to church since he has foul language. <laughs> I'm here all week. You know, Thanksgiving is a time in which we tend to think about the ways in which God has blessed us. But do you ever stop to wonder how do we bless God? 
Here's what it says, Psalm 103, verse 1. And bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. So it's easy to see how God blessed David, the author of Psalm 103. But how does, how could David bless God? Well, actually, David answers that question in the next verse. Psalm 103, verse 2, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits. A person blesses God by remembering all that God has done and thanking him for it. So if God blesses people with gifts, then people bless God with gratitude. If God blesses people by giving them things, then people bless God by giving him thanks. And we see in this verse that our thanksgiving to God should be wholehearted. Our blessing God should be wholehearted. David says, I bless the Lord, bless the Lord, oh my soul, with all, with all that is within me. It needs to really be wholehearted when we give, a, give our thanks to God. And he also said, for all of his benefits, that we stop and we begin to ponder all the ways that God has blessed us. And then David gets specific in his psalm. The first thing he mentions that we should remember and give God thanks for is forgiveness. He says this, who pardons all your iniquities. Bless the Lord, all my soul, for getting out of his benefits, first benefit. He pardons all your iniquities. Now, David needed forgiveness, of course, after his sin, sins of adultery and murder. He wrote actually about the tremendous shame and guilt he was carrying for those sins. He wrote about that in some other psalms. But then he was confronted by the prophet Nathan. You can read of his story in the Old Testament. And as he's confronted by his sin, he then repents and confesses his sin to the Lord. And then Nathan, the prophet, says some of the most beautiful words in the Bible. He says to David, the Lord has taken away your sin. Aren't those the most beautiful words? The Lord has just taken away your sin. I want you to think back to when sin weighed heavy on you. Think about a time when you really felt a tremendous amount of shame you're carrying and guilt you're carrying. But then you repented and you turned to Christ and this reality hits you that the Lord has taken away all your sin. He's taken it all away. In fact, later in Psalm 103, David says, as far as the east is from the west, has he taken away your sin. All of it. And I emphasize all of it because I've talked to so many believers over the years that say, I believe he forgives me, but not for that one thing, not that thing. For all your sin. The Lord has taken away all your sin. Aren't you grateful? So just close your eyes for a moment. Let's just give him thanks for forgiving us of all our sins. Lord, we do thank you. We thank you for taking away all of our guilt and shame and sin, removing it totally away from us forever and ever. Thank you. Well, the second specific that David gives thanks for is healing. He says, who heals all your diseases. Now, the simple meaning of this is that whenever there's been healing in the past, in your life, just look past your life, all the times you had some accident or you had some sickness and you were healed from it. Every time that happened in your entire life, God did it. He heals all your diseases. Everything that you were healed from, he did it. Amen. Now, some of you, you know, I could ask you a question, do you believe in divine healing? And some of you, you might have some different responses, but the truth is there is no other kind. There is no healing that is not divine. Cecil Taylor, a pastor, was preaching on this, and he said, he said this, and I quote, God may heal by means of doctors and medicine and hospitals. 
God sometimes heals without doctors in medicine and hospitals. God sometimes heals in spite of doctors, medicine, and hospitals. But always and only, it is God who heals. So if a person takes an aspirin and their head stops aching, God did it. So thank him for it. Some of us are alive today simply because God healed us. That's why we're alive today. God healed us. When disease sapped our strength, robbed our health, or somehow some injury damaged and broke our bodies, God touched our bodies and healed them enough for us to be in this room or watching online. We are here and alive for only one reason, because God healed us. Some of you could have died from the flu, from measles, mumps, heart attack, cancer, polio, dengue, fever, malaria, COVID, the list goes on and on. But you're alive today for only one reason, and that is God healed you. Amen. God heals all your disease. Everything you've been healed from your whole life, he did it. So let's just pause a minute, close your eyes, and let's thank him for that. Lord, thank you for all those times you healed me. Thank you, Lord, that you have kept me alive, and I'm alive today only because you did it. And we give you thanks, Lord. We thank you. All right, third specific that David blesses God by thanking him for is protection. He says in Psalm 103, verse 4, who redeems your life from the pit. Now, for David, the pit was a place of death and destruction. And redeem meant not so much bringing back his life from that realm as keeping him from it, protecting him from it. So David praised the Lord for rescuing him from premature death time and time again. In fact, dozens and dozens of times, David was confronted with possibility of death as you read his story, and God stepped in and saved his life. From David's earliest days, he was a child of divine providence. I mean, when you read his story, he had cliffhanger after narrow escape by the dozens. From the jaw of the lion and the paw of the bear, he talks about. From the sword of Goliath and the javelin of Saul. From the armies of Absalom and the forces of the Philistines, God delivered David over and over and over, protected him. No wonder he breaks out and says, he redeems my life from the pit. Every person here today, whether you know it or not, you are a child of providence. You are alive today because God protected you. That's the only reason you're alive today. He protected you from all kinds of things that should have taken your life. Some you know about, some you don't. As a newborn, I was very sickly. I was in the hospital a long time, had multiple problems. They didn't think I would live. But God redeemed my life from the pit because I'm a child of providence. So are you. Amen. And you're alive today because God kept you alive, protected you. Many things of which you know he protected you from, but so many things we have no idea he protected us from. So let's just thank him for protection. Now close your eyes again. Father, we thank you for all the times you've protected us and kept us alive Thank you for all the rescue times you stepped in. And thank you for all the times we don't even know about. We thank you, Lord. All right, the fourth specific is David thanks God for his love. He says, who crowns you with loving kindness and compassion. Now, the Hebrew word here for crown actually comes from the root word meaning to circle or to surround or to hem in. So David blesses God and praises him for his all-encompassing love, realizing there's nowhere he could go that God's love didn't surround him. And the same is true for us. There's a farmer who once mounted a weather vane on the top of his barn that simply had the words on the weather vane, God is love. And one windy day, that thing is spinning around, and one of his you know, non-religious neighbors <clears throat> came up to him and said, oh, so that means that God's love is as changeable as the wind. He said, no, that's not what it means. 
It means that whichever way the wind blows, God is love. Amen. There's never anywhere that God is orchestrating your path that his love is not encircling you and determining what comes your way. Amen. His love is all-encompassing. So let's just pause and just thank you for that. Close your eyes again. Let's say, Lord, we just thank you for, for, for always turning everything for our good, no matter what situation, because you love us. We thank you, Lord, that, that you have orchestrated our lives in such a way that your love always prevails. It always wins out. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name. All right, fifth specific is the fact that God satisfies us. We should give him thanks for it. David says, who satisfies your years with good things. Now, David may have meant that God always provides food to eat, and that's worth giving thanks for. But actually, it, God's satisfaction of our lives goes way beyond groceries. You know, as St. Augustine said, that each person is born with a God-shaped vacuum that only God can fill. And so God satisfies us with himself. And he fills us not just with purpose and meaning, but he fills us with his presence, and that's satisfying. There is a deep joy and peace that comes with knowing God. So he satisfies every longing. He satisfies our deepest desires. You know, this world is constantly you know, running here and there, moaning with Mick Jagger, I can't find no satisfaction, can't get no satisfaction. The truth is we got satisfaction. We don't have to run after it. We got it with God. So let's just pause again and give him thanks. Father, we thank you for filling that hole in us that only you can fill. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your nearness. Communion with you is satisfying. It's the most satisfying thing. And thank you that we get to have it forever. Amen. Last specific I'll mention is the strengthening of the Lord. King David says in Psalm 103, verse 5, so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. So David meant that God gives, gave him a buoyant, tireless strength. Time and time again, when he felt like he couldn't go on, God would step in and give him the strength, the vigor, to keep on keeping on. I don't know how many of you guys remember when we had Clay Dyer, the professional bass fisherman, speak at our men's meeting and then our Sunday morning. If you were there, you remember him because he had no arms and no legs. And one of the things that he said that has stuck with me is he said, he said, my entire life, I've never said the words, I can't. Because I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. Boy, that hit me. Here's a guy with no arms and no legs that says, I've never said the words, I can't. Because I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. Last week when I was uh, preaching at the uh, Pakistan Pastors Conference, you know, four nights in a row from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m., I had s several people worried about me saying, aren't you tired? You know, are you okay? And, and that verse would come to my mind. I'd think of Clay Dyer too. <laughs> I'd think, I'm fine. I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. And I'll be honest with you, I never felt tired. See, and the truth is, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, too. But you've got to believe it. And so let's just take a moment and just thank him for his strength. Father, we thank you for all the times we didn't think we could keep going, and you gave us the strength. You gave us that strength, Lord, that vigor to continue on. Thank you, Jesus, that we can do all things through you as you strengthen us. So that's just a list of six specifics that, David mentions that he thanks God for, and as he thanks God for him, God's blessed by that. That giving of thanks blesses God. So we thank God for forgiveness today. We thank him for healing. We thank him for protection. We thank him for his love. We thank him for his satisfaction, how he satisfies us. We thank you for his strength. Now we're going to continue our service by giving you a chance to give thanks so for some specifics to the Lord. And the way we're going to do that is first we're going to have a video of some who are going to give thanks on video. 
And as they're doing that, some of you that would like to give thanks, go ahead. You can go ahead and get, come up here during the video, get in line, and I'll have a microphone. I'll go ahead and tell you what the ABCs of this time is. A stands for be audible, so I'm going to let you speak into the mic so we can hear you. B stands for be brief. That means once you take off, please land. <laughs> and C stands for Christ Center. This is not a time to talk about the great things you've done for God. This is a time to talk about the great things God has done for you. So as you're thinking about what you'd like to share, let's watch this video. I want to thank God for Wyatt. Um, we got to bring him home to Texas after he was born in a foreign country. And when he was born, he was born and turned blue quickly after and was in the NICU and we weren't really quite sure what was going on and we just prayed out to God, cried out to him. and. Actually, that um, same day we were waiting in our hospital room with no baby, we turned on our live stream and Grace uh, had a prayer meeting and I got to hear people that I loved praying for my son um, that he'd get to go home with us. And so we're just so thankful and want to give God the glory for letting us take him home and then now bring him home to Texas to meet everyone. So we're so thankful. So I'm thankful that the Lord heals me of my migraines. I had been having a lot of episode of migraines on my way to bed when I was waking up. And one day in our small group, while we were doing Food for the Soul, um, I shared with my group that I had these migraines. And Larry felt on his heart that the Lord was asking him to pray over me. So he didn't hesitate. He asked the group to lace or to pray over me. And again, they didn't think twice. They came to me, they lay hands, and since that day, I haven't had another episode of my migraines. I'm thankful for that. Hi, we are the Kemp family. This year, we are so thankful that we got to adopt Jackson Harper and Club. The past couple of years have been so crazy for us. Uh, we were serving in East Asia, and at the start of the pandemic, we went on a trip and we haven't been able to go back since. So it's been 22 months of unknowns, change, waiting, uh, transition. Um, it's, it's been a lot of questions for us too. But God's been so good. He's been the one thing we rely on and we do know about. We know His goodness. He's provided for us every step of the way, um, materially, physically, a place for us and our kids. Mm -hmm. Even more than that, He's provided for us Jesus. And, and we're just so thankful for um, that He is all we need. Some of the things that I'm thankful for in this Thanksgiving season is uh, Financial Peace University. My wife and I took Financial Peace University um, last October through December. And we began doing all the things that they teach you to do in Financial Peace. And uh, little did we know that fast forward to July the 1st, I had emergency surgery and I got a stage four colon cancer diagnosis out of that. And we were prepared for this eventuality. I've not worked since June of this year. Um, and our emergency savings fund has got us through all of, all of the financial uh, issues that we're dealing with. And that's just one of the things among the many, many things that I have to be thankful for uh, here at Thanksgiving. On September 12, 2020, my dad was admitted to the hospital with what appeared to be severe COVID symptoms. He was in ICU and had coded once within the first few hours. After being in ICU on a ventilator with very little improvement for over two weeks, we were informed that he would need a tracheotomy the next day and admitted into a long-term facility as it would take months to recover, not including to learn how to eat, walk, and talk again. We requested prayers from our Grace family and friends and fasted, praying for a miracle. When I arrived that next morning, my dad was awake and breathing completely on his own. It was a complete miracle. And I knew this as the doctors and nurses were coming to see for themselves. They couldn't believe it. They had never seen someone wake up and improve so drastically in a matter of hours. One doctor said, I don't know who it is you've been praying to, but he's real. This year on the same date, I broke down in tears again, but this time, tears of joy, praising God and thanking Him for all that He had done for the miracle that we were able to witness. He was able to go back to work within a matter of a couple of months 
and now knowing Jesus is his savior, Jesus healed him, and all things are possible through him. We're so thankful we've had another year to spend with my dad, making memories and being able to spend time with him. I'm so thankful to you, Grace family, for all of your prayers during that time. And I'm especially thankful to God for healing him and showing us this miracle. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. First of all, Gary and I want you to know that we are so thankful for you, our church family. We really love each one of you. And this Thanksgiving, I would just like to say that I am so thankful for my granddaughter, Blakely Austin Tanner. Well, let me invite let me invite some of you to go ahead and come on up here. You can go ahead and line up on each side. We'll go ahead and come up, make yourself handy if you would. In fact, don't stay on the stairs. Come all the way up here on the stage, so we can get you one after another. Come on, Ian. This year, I'm thankful for my father, and that he's still with us. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everybody. I want to say I'm thankful for you, Pastor Gary. Uh, for bringing a, a great teacher into my life. Recently, you told us to pick up a, a dictionary and learn about the things that we're reading about in, in, in the Bible. Well, I've been walking with the Lord for 30 years. No one's ever said that. Taking my lovely wife to the restroom, there happened to be under the free bookshelf a free dictionary. And I've been using that. So now as I'm reading and I'm finding, like I'm reading about Corinthia, Corinth, and I'm reading about all the things that went in there, that was such a fantastic learning opportunity for me that now, if you guys don't have a dictionary, you're missing out. Amen. Good morning, church family. Um, I want to say happy Thanksgiving, and I'm thankful for Pastor Steve here for healing, and I'm thankful for Past uh, Mrs. Pastor Will's wife, Jenny, and I'm thankful for my family, and I'm thankful for Grace Community Church family for prayer and just support. Thank you. I have a lot to be thankful for, but one thing in particular, I, I was blessed with really great parents, and my dad has always been an amazing father, but he's never really had a spiritual life, and uh, I prayed for him, and uh, my Mom prayed for him for years, and, and uh, but about five years ago, I really sensed that God was really moving me to pray for him, and uh, it's, it's like I became possessed with the idea of praying that my dad would uh, come to know the Lord, because there was no evidence that he ever had, and uh, he, would, he learned to say the right things, but uh, there, was, uh, there was just no fruit uh, outside of just being a good father, a natural man. Uh, but anyway, my dad uh, became sick about three months ago. He couldn't swallow. And as a result, he started, uh, you know, starving and being severely dehydrated and went downhill. They ended up having to put a feeding tube in him. The, the point is, is that I knew that it was going to take something radical to get my dad's attention. That happened. I got to lead him to the Lord in the hospital. And even then, I wasn't, I was grateful, but I, I, didn't, ha I didn't see outside of him saying the right words uh, that this was God uh, actually working in my dad. And then one night, he was just, uh, the Spirit of God just came on him when I was praying for him. And he just started repenting, just uh, almost wailing before the Lord to forgive him of his many sins. Just he, he uh, repeated that over and over. So anyway, my dad is with the Lord now. As of nine uh, days ago, he, he's with the Lord. That's great. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Um, my name is P.J. Johnson. I'm thankful for my precious husband. I'm thankful for having godly parents. But I'm thankful that the Lord healed me of a stroke. April will be three years ago. And he completely healed me. I'm thankful for... I'm thankful.
grateful for this pastor and this church. And when I moved up here, I knew I had a good church to come to because my daughter and her family used to come here. And when I would visit, <laughs> I would come. And I love this preacher. He is... Um, he walks the walk and he talks the talk and he is a fantastic teacher and I've grown so much in the two years, a little over two years now that I've belonged to this church and I'm just thankful for all of this loving congregation. You are so accepting and so loving and each of our pastors, uh, they have chosen well. And I'm thankful for, I'm just thankful for Jesus saving me. Hello. Um, I am here to say thank you to the Lord and to you guys. My dad and my mom have been, have gone through huge, huge obstacles. My dad had a liver transplant. He was on his way home. Well, he was supposed to come home. And the day before, he had a brain aneurysm. Uh, thank you, Jesus, that it was about five minutes from the hospital. The biggest scare of our life. But thank you, Heavenly Father, that they are here today. And um, honestly, I am grateful and thankful for you all. My sister and her having doing the prayer groups. And I was here every Sunday while they were in Phoenix. And they were fighting to come home. And I knew that one day they were going to come home and we were going to be able to join them here at their church, which is actually kind of becoming mine. <laughs> but uh, I am just really, really thankful for all the great things that, and he is here and he is slowly beginning to swallow and eat. And hopefully on Wednesday, he'll pass his test to be able to swallow and eat. So. Well, I've got a whole list of things I could be thankful for, but I think the one I want to just, just focus on today is I'm just thankful for the joy that we have in the Lord. I mean, it's so awesome just to wake up every morning and know that I get a chance today to do things that have eternal significance. What, what a joy. Um, so I'm just so thankful for the joy that we have in him. Uh, good morning, Grace family. Uh, like Don said, so many things to be grateful for, but some... Uh, Call outs for this year is definitely uh, on October 9th. I added an additional family member, Kat Marsden. Raise your hand, Kat, so they know who you are. <laughs> uh, two weeks later, I uh, added a grandchild, uh, Aubrey and Andrew Gallus, uh, uh, Mila. And I'm just so thankful for the additions to my family and, and thankful for my wife, Sherry, for uh, putting up with me all these years. So. <laughs> I, and I'm just thankful that uh, God's word is true. Uh, I'm thankful for the Lord, for the Lord Jesus Christ. Stand up, Sherry. <laughs> That's my beautiful daughter-in-law, Sherry Lee. This is my son, Curtis. I'm thankful for them. They are gracious, kind. They love me. They protect me. They hover over me. <laughs> <They're>, uh, <laughs> but I, I'm just so thankful for them. They, they are unusual. They're um, saved. <laughs> That's what they are. <laughs> Thank, I thank God for Sherry and Curtis Lee and her mom, Charlene White. Um, I'm thankful for God's discipline and reproof, his tough love. For 23 years, I was too terrified to talk to anyone or even give someone a smile in passing. And you cannot obey God's commands of loving others and fellowshipping with them 
if you're too scared to even smile at them. So one day he um, uh, showed some tough love and booted me out of my hiding hole and out into the world by a psychotic break, which landed me in, in the hospital. And um, ever since then, he's been using my, um, my uh, mental issues and uh, social anxiety and teaching me to, um, sorry, uh, rely on him and um, to uh, fight against all that and um, to strive to obey him. Uh, sorry. She did good, didn't she? Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I just want to thank God for a great uh, transformation of heart and mind. And the reason why I say that is because I'm, uh, as of today, I'm 38 years old. And I've pretty much been in church since I've been, been in the womb, been in my mother's womb. And uh, I've never really had a desire to run after God. Um, up until two and a half, maybe three years ago, I was uh, laying in the bed, and I just asked God, I was just laying there praying, I asked God to come into my heart. And uh, after some time of just laying there and just praying, uh, it literally felt like God was massaging my heart. Uh, it's, it's an undescribable feeling of, of what I felt on my heart. It literally felt like God was just literally just caressing my heart. And from that point on, I had a desire now to want to just give God thanks. Uh, I run after God. Uh, I read my Bible uh, pretty much. Well, I try to read it every day. I'm not going to stand and say that I do, but I do make an attempt, you know, to, to read my Bible uh, each and every day. Uh, I've now been blessed with a wife, a beautiful wife, who actually helps me along this journey. So uh, I'm, I'm very thankful for that. I am really forgive my parents who raised me and a wonderful God who wants to love me and care with me. And I want to forgive my, my leader, Steve, because he always take care of me and being so wonderful and and I really forgive Pastor Gary to give all the learning for all the Bible and being the awesome friend I ever have. And I also love one of my father is God and I really love him. So. I wanted to honor my, my parents, my mom and dad, and, and say how thankful I am for them. Uh, we lost both of them this past year. And it's when someone's gone that you realize how much you appreciate them, how much you've missed them, and you think about all the things that they did for you, and um, they were always there for me. They love me unconditionally than most anybody on this planet could. And you take it for granted. And so I just wanted to say thanks to God for giving me wonderful parents. They're always there for me and love me. Good morning, God bless. My name is Larissa, this is my first visit here. My friend Rosa from work, um, from work brought me. And I just want to thank God for you know healing my son who was diagnosed with leukemia in August. Um, 2021 of this year. He was in the hospital for two months. He's finally home um, from all the love and support of family, friends, and loved ones. Um, um, he was just, um, the doctor let us know that he was cancer free, but cancer free. And um, I just want to thank God because it's been a rough road for me year after year. I lost my husband 
in my fall in 2019, and God has given me the strength to still be strong, stand still, and just depend on him. And as long as you depend on God, you don't have to worry about nothing because he's always a man of his word, and I just want to thank him for that. Thank you, guys. Good morning, everyone. I'm just blessed to be alive and, um, you know, so much that God has actually um, helped me through and brought me back to life. Uh, I also had cancer uh, and God just really uh, poured out to me and the prayers and my, a lot of my siblings also had cancer, my mom. But God just did miracles after miracles and, you know, he always has a purpose for everything and I'm just so thankful I had to come here and just thank the Lord and thank for the church that, you you know, all the churches that's standing right now with everything that's been going on, we need to stand together. And the Lord is awesome. You know, he'll carry us through no matter what happens. And I'm not good at speaking, but I'm just really grateful to the Lord. In Jesus. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. My name is Ephraim. Um, I'm from Cameroon, Africa. And we have been in the U.S. but basically for about four years. Uh, we have been in Ohio, and we just came here for about three months. And when we got, <coughs> excuse me, when we got here, one of the challenges we had was that we needed a living church to serve there, and it was really a huge challenge. And being new in this environment, we had to go praying. We prayed and we prayed and we prayed. And God directed me to one other church. I went there. When I went there, the doors were locked. Then. It took me here. When I came here, and I said, God, prove to me if this is where you want us to save you. And he proved it. The message was so heart-touching. And we went home so satisfied. So I want to thank God for that. Then secondly, also, I want to thank God for what he has done in my life and the life of my family. Uh, last year was really a very challenging year for me and for my family. I lost my mom in November last year, and in December, I lost my wife. Then in March 2021, I lost my junior sister. And it was really a huge challenge for me, and I was like, I was going to pass away. But I want to thank, stand here to thank God for the strength. I want to thank God for the blessing upon my children, my daughter and my son. And I want to thank him for the people, for the community of Christians that he surrounded us with and they were able to support us and we are coming out of that crisis and we want to say, God, thank you. There's no other thing we can pay him back for what he has done. He is an amazing God and I just love him for what he has done and all one thing I know is that the good work that he started in my life and my family, he will bring it to a successful finish in Christ Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Good job, man. Good job. I want to thank God for his healing power. My grandson, uh, Noah, got uh, really sick and was in the hospital for two weeks. He'd had a seizure, and uh, he had a bunch of stomach problems, and they never could figure out what it was. But we prayed and prayed. The whole church prayed, and he got out of the hospital and was feeling good. And then he started feeling bad, called up a couple of elder buddies. They came over and prayed. He started feeling great again. Several weeks later, or a week or so later, he started feeling bad, called up a couple of my older buddies. They came over, prayed. He's feeling great and is still feeling great. So I'm so thankful that he is healed. I'm so thankful for elder buddies who come over and pray over him. And I'm thankful that God heals. I'm also thankful for my wife. <laughs> Good morning, church. Um, it was actually really hard to come up here because I have severe social anxiety. So um, God was actually pushing me up here. So I didn't know what I was going to say until I actually got here, but I'm just going to let him take it. Um, about a year ago today, not today, but um, last November, I almost lost my life in a car accident. Um, <sighs> sitting back and looking and just reflecting over the way this year's gone and the way last year ended, I just want to give thanks to God because without him, I would not be here. Um, I want to thank God for my personal prayer warrior 
sitting right over here. Um, without her, I would not be here. I mean, it's been very hard to keep my faith throughout this past year and the ending of last year, but without my mom, I can honestly say I would not be here. Um, mom, thank you so much for always being here for me. It's really hard to sit back and see your personal growth through struggle, but once you finally sit back and actually, you know, just reflect, God just lays everything out in front of you. So I just want to thank God for that and thank him for keeping me and thank this church. I also thank this church for um, just being there for my family since we've been through a lot. So thank you guys. I'm going to go ahead and invite the worship team to come make their way up here as we finish. Go ahead and come on up, and we're going to close with one song just here in a minute. Hello. Um, I am thankful for God's healing. Um, he has taken me on a healing journey. I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis MS in 2006, and um, soon after just was in a wheelchair and a walker and a cane. I also had avascular necrosis in my ankle, which was bone death, and had about six surgeries to get um, to a point where I could uh, stand on it without any assistance. But uh, I soon was on 13 different medications from my doctor. And over the past, I want to say about three and a half years, um, I went on a healing journey with God, and he got me off of all 13 prescription medications out of a wheelchair. Without a cane, without a walker, without any assistance, I'm thankful for every step that I'm able to take and for his healing. Um, I lost over 100 pounds during that time frame, too, which I, and did physical therapy. And thanks, glory be to God that I'm standing here. And I just thank every day that I'm able to take a step and walk. Amen. Okay, this will be our last one. Good morning, church. Yeah, that was, that was my daughter just, uh, just uh, give thanks. To me, every day is Thanksgiving. Trust me, every day is Thanksgiving. Every day we have challenges. At the end of the day, we kneel in front of the bed and thank God. Yes, as she stated, last year was, was something that I've never experienced in my life. But we showed the pictures. If you were here last year in November... Thanksgiving period, we showed the pictures over there. The, the car was total, like up to there, we just lose, lose, we lost the car, but I didn't even blink because she was saved. Nothing, I mean, a scratch. There was nothing wrong with her after the accident, but the car was total. That was just God. Yeah, so when we showed the picture, everybody was like, really? Yeah, she came out perfect, nothing, and it was God. And again, we just want to thank God, and we keep thanking him every day. It's everyday thing, even though we, in the United States, we have a special day, Thanksgiving Day, but every day is a Thanksgiving Day. Thank you guys so much. Hi, I'm Sybil Vandenbosch. I've been here so many times. First of all, I want to thank our Lord for every day waking me up and healing me. I want to thank my church and Gary, Gary, my pastor. I want to thank Steve Hedlund. He's been my inspiration for getting up. And my husband, Jim, is over there that has medical problems himself, but he takes care of me. I want to thank my church group for the healing that's been in my body. I've been through so many things, and he's healed me through all of it. Right now, I've got one more leg to heal, but my Lord will do it because he told me through cancer and back surgeries and knee surgeries and just everything. He has something for me to do until I do it. I know that he will keep healing me. And I just want to thank everybody for everything that I have because y'all are my church family. And y'all are my praying for me. Hey, let's all stand up. I will 
bow down in your holy place give thanks for your love and your truth when I call you answer gave me strength to my soul I will lift my hands and give praise to you for giving us new life. The old is gone and new is coming. Thank you for all the testimonies this morning. And it's all for your glory, for your glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. You're dismissed.